Hey guys, welcome as you might know it, Node.js version 14 has been released. So let's go through the main functionality of that release and see how it impacts us as developers. Here's a very nice article. I'm going to link that article in the description below. So let's go through the main functionality that uh, are available in the release 14, version 14 of Node.js. So first of all, you have the diagnostic report that now is a stable feature. Again, it's not something I have used personally, but it can be useful, for instance, to track, uh, to trace um, if you have an error in your app, so you can get a detailed uh, diagnostic of that. Secondly, you have the experimental async, a local storage API. So it's a way of storing the state, having some state between um, asynchronous calls, uh, such as callbacks or promise chains. And that can be useful, but again, that's not something I have used personally. There's some uh, optimizations made with streams. If you want to check that out, you have the description in the document. You also have some features on the web assembly and some optimizations on the um, deprecated modules. So that's basically it. The most important thing I think is the update of the V8 engine to the V8 8.1 version. So as developers, I think it's, it's an interesting thing. First of all, you have the optional chaining. By the way, the V8 version 8.1 is already available in Chrome, but now you have that engine in, in Node.js as well. So let's actually go through uh, through that functionality and see what is that exactly with an example. So for optional chaining, let's say you have an object and the object has something, oops, and the object has something like a property, like a name, Vladimir, let's say, right? And if you want to access that property, you would do something like, um, like that object.name so it's chaining with the dot notation in that case if you want to get a property of that property which does not exist which is undefined uh, if you say name 2 for instance or let's say age then it will return you undefined right until now it's actually quite okay it's normal but if you want to get the property of that property which does not exist what you will get is an error so you will get an error if you try to return that in the case that you want to avoid that error, you are going to use optional chaining. So you can just uh, use a uh, interrogation mark before the property call. And instead of returning an error, it will return undefined. I don't have on out of the top of my head a, an example where that can be useful, but it's good to know. Um, second thing is the new knowledge coalescing. So it's um, a way to to pass a value to, to a variable and have a fallback. So let me explain. For instance, you have something like mar, my var, and you want to pass a value to that variable. But if the value is like false, for instance, you want to return a fallback. So usually we were doing something um, like, uh, let's say you have a value, another variable that comes here. We don't know its value uh, from, from the beginning. So it will be something var2. And if var2 is false, uh, then um, or null or undefined or zero, then we want to get a fallback. So for instance, hello, and let's get rid of my var so we can we can get some debugging here. So it's for if it's false with the or operator, you, can, you will get the fallback. If it's zero, any false value, any value that is considered as false, it will fall back to the second um, uh, side of the expression. You also have null and you also have undefined, right? So this is the OR operator. What the knowledge coalescing does is that it um, allows to fall back on the second value only if you have a null or undefined value. So if it's the first of all, the knowledge coalescing, you write it like that. So if it's undefined, it will fall back to the second value. If it's null, it will fall back to the second value. But if it's any false value that is not undefined or null, it will actually conserve the first value so it will be if it's false it will be it will be false if it's zero it will be zero so again i don't see out out of the top of my head uh, any example where that might be useful but it, again it's good to know especially if you have a job interview uh, about javascript you can show your knowledge with knowledge coalescing you also have um, international display names so it's a way to to actually translate um, 
uh, regions and languages in other languages. So again, it's not something I'm using, but it's good to know that it exists. And uh, yeah, some some uh, some more functionality with the international uh, module uh, with date formats. And yeah, and that's it. If you want to get more information, you can always go to the V8 uh, dev blog and you will have more information. But as far as I'm concerned, what interests me as a developer are those two functionalities, um, optional chaining and knowledge coalescing. So I hope that this video was useful for you guys and see you next time.